Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner. Let's mix a song together. Also, you might notice new digs. I'm in a new place. I'll do a studio tour. You'll get to see the whole thing. This might be my favorite studio to date, and I've had a lot <laughs> of studios to date. But more importantly, today's matter of business is we're kicking off season four of Mix Together. If you're not familiar with it, Mix Together is a series where I mix a song in its entirety in a series of videos here on YouTube, and I also provide the tracks to you so you can mix them. It is literally a free mixing course here on YouTube, and it's sponsored by my good friends at Sweetwater. Now, everyone says my good friends at Sweetwater. I literally am good friends with so many people at Sweetwater. I actually worked there for about three years. Gosh, it was over 10 years ago. And uh, since then, I've been a loyal customer and fan of Sweetwater, and they are sponsoring this series, which is super cool. Thanks, Sweetwater. Uh, but what's the deal with Sweetwater? Head to Sweetwater.com and check them out. Um, they've got a huge selection. Their salespeople know what they're talking about. So if you're not sure which is the right piece of gear or which pieces of gear to combine together, sales engineers can help you out there. Thirdly, they have free tech support which is cool. Think about it. If you buy a Personas interface um, with another piece of software and another piece of software um, from all these different companies, if you have a problem, you got to call all these different companies for tech support, not with Sweetwater. They have in-house tech support. That costs a lot to have a full-time staff, huge staff of tech support to support the products, but they do, and it's killer. So you kind of a one-stop shop for everything you need as opposed to having to get all your support requests from all these other places, which, by the way, a lot of times what happens is Company A will blame Company B, Company B will blame Company A, and nothing gets done. Sweetwater has no dog in the fight. They're just here to help you with whatever issues you might run into. Um, there's so many other things. If you buy guitars, at least two of those guitars over there I bought from Sweetwater and had them shipped here. I know what you're thinking. Who would buy a guitar side unseen? Their guitar gallery lets you see the if they, maybe they have six... Uh, Gibson J45s in stock. You can see all six and choose the one that you like the finish the best. Then they'll do a huge 55-point inspection on the guitar, make sure it's up to snuff, then ship it out to you. It is wonderful. I bought both at least, I can't remember how many guitars I bought from them, but it's over. It's it's great. Super great system. So thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this series. You can find links to Sweetwater in the description uh, and links to get the tracks for this mixed together season as well and links to the artist for the song. We're going to mix it all down in the description here on YouTube. Be sure to spend some time down there and check all of that out because it took a lot of people to make this happen. Okay, let's dive in. Here is my screen. Let's uh, let's look at what we've got here. So the song we're working on is a song called Looking for L, and it was actually written and produced by two of my VIP members. So I've had a VIP membership as a part of my paid offerings here at Home Studio Corner. Uh, launched it in 2011, long time ago, uh, and it's evolved over the years to become this place where a lot of musicians come together to collaborate and to do monthly challenges where we each, we have a new challenge every month where we're doing something musical in the studio. Now, maybe you're like me and you have a hard time getting motivated sometimes. Having some sort of challenge where other you know other people are doing it can be really handy. So a few months ago, one of the challenges was to write a song with another VIP member, preferably one you hadn't worked with before. Um, so the song we have here called Looking for L was written by Dennis and Simon. They collaborated together, and instead of just writing a song, they produced the whole thing, and the result is what we have here. A really cool song with some killer guitar tones, um, great chord progressions, cool melody. Guarantee it's going to be stuck in your head because <laughs> it gets stuck in mind every time I listen to it. Um, I have not mixed this song. Um, I've pulled the tracks in. I've messed around with it a little bit, um, but I will legit be mixing this along with you. You know, that's not true. I did do... I did do a little bit of mixing on it just to ch test out the tracks, but we're going to be starting here from scratch in my session inside of Studio One, dragging the tracks in. So if you haven't gotten the tracks already and you want to follow along, pause the video, look in the description. There's a link to where you can sign up, fill out an email form. You'll get an instant email with the download link for this song. So a couple of things to note, like good little musicians, uh, they put the name of the song, the sample rate, which is 44.1 kilohertz, the bit depth, which is 24, and the tempo, which is 115, super helpful. Uh, having the tempo is nice, especially if you want to add in, if you want to do any editing to the grid, and also if you want to add in things like a delay that syncs to the tempo of the song. Having the tempo there really helps. And so I prefer when I do this, I always put as much information as I can in the folder name itself uh, so people don't have to rely on looking up emails or go finding somewhere else to find the rest of the information. A README 
you know, text file inside the folder can do that as well. I like to have it right in the name. Okay, so here's Studio One. If you're not using Studio One, that's fine. Um, I have hundreds of customers over the years who use systems other than me. I started out with Pro Tools, now I'm in Studio One. Whatever you're using, whether it's Cubase, GarageBand, Logic, Reaper, Cakewalk still around. Um, whatever you're using, I'm going to show you the principles that I use. The mechanics of how it works in your system will be slightly different, but the principles will apply no matter what. Obviously, if you use Studio One, it's a little bit extra bonus for you, but I promise you this isn't going to be a Studio One fest where I'm showing you all these tricks in Studio One. We're really going to work on mixing the song, which is more fun than learning software. Am I right? Okay, so we're going to open a new song, and I'm going to start with my mixing template, okay? Look, okay, so this song is called Looking for L. I'm gonna do MT just so I know that it's the mixed together song. 44 1, 24 bit, and the tempo was 115. We'll go ahead and put that in. I don't wanna stretch the audio files, and I don't wanna play overlaps. I think the song's in 4 4. We can change that later if we need to. This is saving to my main Studio One folder, which is right, so I'll hit OK. Now I'm starting from a template. Uh, we'll just delete that for now. Starting from a template that, uh, so it's not a blank slate. So you may want to, I've done several videos on my templates before. You may want to go back. There's some on this channel and also on Personas' YouTube channel to kind of talk through how I do my templates. Let me give you the brief tour here. Here in the mixer, I have seven buses, okay? And each bus corresponds to the seven types of tracks that I tend to mix. Drums, bass, electric, acoustic, keys, vocals, background vocals. Then all of these tracks that are colored white, these are my effects sends. So I have a room reverb, a plate reverb, a spring reverb, so three reverbs, and then three delays. A slapback delay, an analog delay with a quarter note delay, and then a beat delay with a half note delay. So they're just two different types of delays. Beat delay just sounds and acts a little bit different than analog delay, which acts a lot more like what you'd expect an analog to delay to act like. Um, these are by no means necessary. I just find myself using at least one or two of these per mix. Um, so I like to have them in my template. So when I'm ready for, if I want some, you know, a little bit of spring reverb on my entire drum kit, I can come here and choose spring reverb. Okay. Uh, the other cool thing, and this is kind of new for this season, I believe, is I also have corresponding folders or folders here that correspond to the buses, okay? Which means when I drag tracks into here, actually, let me get those tracks started. I'm gonna select all of these tracks. We've got 23 tracks here uh, in the download. So I'm gonna drag them into my session, pull them all the way to the left so they start at zero. And I'm gonna hit save and say, yes, copy all of these to the session folder. So I've got these, uh, these buses in my mixer. And a bus, if you're not familiar, it's when I can take all my drums and route them to a drum bus. I'm literally routing those channels through a single fader uh, called drums. And that fader lets me turn all the drums up and down, right? Because they're all running through that fader. It also lets me put things like EQ and compression across the entire drum kit with one or two plugins as opposed to putting EQ and compression on each individual channel. Um, and then from there, I've got those linked up to folders. So when I drag a track into a folder, it actually does a couple of things. It changes the color of the track. It also routes the track to the appropriate output. So when I take these tracks here, drag them into this drums bus, you can see they all turn blue. And if we switch over to the mixer, we can now see they're all routed to the drums bus. And even better than that, I can actually expand. I forgot to change that setting. And actually expand and close the folder on both the mixer and the arranger by clicking here. So we can expand things out and only see what we want to see. Not necessary, but it's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so let me make sure I've got all my drums here. There's a hi-hat. There is, I think that's it. I believe these, if I'm not mistaken, this is Easy Drummer for the drums or Superior Drummer, something like that. They are virtual drums. Um, a lot of people ask me, well, how do I mix virtual drums? I say I mix them the same way I mix any drums. I listen and I give it what it needs. Sometimes it doesn't need all that much, which is cool, um, but I still do listen to everything. All right, acoustics go to the acoustics bus. Bass goes to the bass bus. Even though it's one track, I like to kind of maintain that consistency. Here's background vocals. There's four of them. They'll go to the background vocal bus. GTR lead verses and chorus. I believe those are electric guitar, so we'll put them there. Keys bridge, keys outro. They named these super easily. And then Vox stands for vocals, and we'll put those there. There are two, two kind of lead vocal tracks. Let me zoom in on the files. I'm not changing the audio here. I'm just zooming in. Um, 
and let's uh, let's continue to organize these. All right, drums are in the order that I like. We've got uh, kick, snare, toms, hi hat, over overheads, and then any percussion. So that feels fine. Uh, as far as guitars and other tracks, I kind of like to rearrange them in the order that they come into the song. So if electric guitar versus comes in first, um, put that one up kind of at the top. It just kind of feels like it's it's more, uh, what am I trying to say? It's kind of chronological, sort of. But most of these, there's, it's a fairly simple song. Like you can see, even though it's it's 23 tracks, I believe, it's not a ton of work. Now this reference folder down here, this is just something I use if I want to drag in a reference file. It goes into that folder which spits it out a different output on my mixer. We don't need that today. So um, I think we're good. All right, so this is my setup. One thing, just so you know, let me drag this. I gotta resize this bad boy. Come here, come on, okay. One thing people ask me a lot is if you look at the right hand side of my screen, you'll see this giant level meter, um, which is super fun to have. Uh, it's just a plug-in. So if your system has a level meter plug-in, mine does, I just put that on my mixer over here on the main output. Let me show you where it is. It's right here, right there in the post section. Um, this is that plug-in. So I just have it set to be open, stretched really big on the right-hand side of the screen. It's super helpful, mostly for doing these videos so you can kind of see what my meter's doing at all times. Um, I just did a video on the Personas channel explaining the K system, so I'm not going to explain it here. You can go find that video. It's called K System for Dummies. That's the red light, yellow light, green light version of the meters that I use for my mixing. The basic gist of it is, while I'm mixing, I have this set to K20, and I try to set it to where the bulk of the mix hangs out here, just above zero, in the yellowish greenish area, and the loudest parts get into the red. As you can see, I'm clipping right now. You can't hear anything because I've got it muted. Um, so I'm gonna have to turn some things down, but that's kind of the metering section of it. So this is the gist of my setup. Um, it's fairly simple, especially if you're starting from a template. Uh, if you don't have a template, that's completely fine. Uh, you'll just have to kind of work your way through and do this manually. I did that for years until I realized, man, I keep doing the same things over and over. It'd be nice to have a template, and now I do. So we finished, uh, if, you, if you've read my five-step mix guide, we finished step one, which is set up, get it set up in a way that's consistent, um, that helps you be consistent in your mixes. This looks like a, jillion, a, a gajillion other mixes that I've done, which is a good sign. It feels familiar already because I set it up the same way I always do. All right, step two of the system is to get our static mix done. So we're going to start working on that now. And the idea here is to just uh, just deal with volume and panning, nothing else. No plugins. There are plugins in place, but they're not doing anything. They're just kind of sitting there waiting for me to add to activate them. Um, so for a good long while, we're going to just focus on setting levels and panning on things. Now, a couple of things. Uh, one of the things I like to do in Studio One, and your system may differ, is there's an input controls function which gives me a trim knob across the top of every channel. That allows me to adjust the volume going in to that channel because like I showed you before, when I hit play, you can see we the levels are pretty hot uh, and we are in some spots clipping our main output. We don't want that to happen. That is a game that so many people play and it's just, it's just not a very fun game. Um, there are funner ways to mix that don't involve always clipping and having to turn things down. So a couple of things. First of all, the K meters will help you with that. If you just turn things down to where the K system isn't in the red the whole time, you will avoid a lot of those clipping problems. Second thing, turn your speakers up and then leave the volume there. If something's not loud, if something's too loud in the system, instead of turning your speakers down, turn it down inside the software and that's gonna solve your problem. Okay, so the way I kind of go through this static mix portion is I'm gonna kind of collapse all of these folders and we'll just kind of tackle them one at a time and then start to blend them together. So it's kind of a multi-stage sometimes static mix where I get a decent mix for the drums, um, just the drums, then get the bass blended, then get the guitars together and then make sure those guitars work with everything else and work our way down. Um, that's the idea here. I have a sneaky suspicion these drums are gonna be too loud. I'm gonna pull my fader down here so we don't blow out your speakers. Okay, so the drums are too loud. Right now I've got my fader down because I didn't want to blow your speakers out. Um, but normally I have my fader right at zero 
and I had it down about six decibels and that was around the volume I wanted. So I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna select, just for preemptively, um, I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna hide everything, just show the audio files, and I'm gonna take all the audio files down six dB. So we're just gonna bring all the audio down six decibels. You can do that a number of ways in your system. I'm doing it with that input control there. And then let me activate all these so we can see all of our buses again. Okay. Now we're starting to kind of work on our static mix. The way I like to work on it is I like to leave my faders mostly at zero. And if I need adjusting, more adjusting on the volume, um, <laughs> if I need to adjust the volume more, I'll actually use the input gain here at the top to do that as opposed to bringing the faders down more. The idea is you get more resolution with the fader up higher than you do down at the bottom, right? If I'm down here and I move the fader just a little bit, that's like 20 dB of volume. That's more than three times the change in overall volume, right? Like three times as loud. Whereas if I'm up here in the middle and I move it the same way, I'm only changing at six decibels, which is only doubling the volume versus tripling it. So I don't like any faders way down there. And one way to combat that is to start your static mix by leaving the faders at zero and get your basic levels using the trim knobs at the top. And then you can adjust the faders for the more fine control. So think of it as like big, rough control at the top, fine control at the fader. All right, I'm gonna mute um, everything. I'm gonna hide these again. And we'll start with just the drums. That's the way I like to work uh, on a song like this, at least. And we'll kind of introduce tracks as we go. What's really interesting about working this way is I don't really, you know, you could start working on this mix and not really know how the song goes. And to me, that's kind of fun. You'll kind of discover it as you go. Just make sure you give every track the attention it needs. So I'm just gonna hit play. And we'll probably jump around different sections of the song to get uh, where we need to go. Um, in it's the sections where certain instruments are playing so we can hear them, but we'll start at the beginning. Drums start at the beginning. That feels like a good place to start. So here we go. Okay, so the drums feel a little bit quiet. Um, so my initial thing is to, instead of turning my speakers up, I've got everything at the levels I like. I'm just gonna turn this up now. Now that I know that everything's at the volume I like for mixing, I can turn these volumes up a little bit and maybe do some on individual channels as well. Okay, the snare is a little thick, kick is not big enough. Let's bring the kick up. And while we're at it, I'm gonna just double check and make sure the snare top and bottom are in phase. I'll select both and solo them, flip the phase of the bottom and then flip it back. Yeah, it sounds way thicker with it not flipped, so we'll leave that alone. Since it's, I know it's electronic drums, I'm not gonna mess with much more phase stuff here. I just don't feel like it, because it's gonna be fine. So right out of the gate, I'm noticing the snare drum is really thick, which I like. I'd rather it be too thick than too thin. I'm gonna need to EQ that later, but I'm not gonna reach for EQ yet. We're just worried about static mix right now. So I'm gonna go find where the toms hit and make sure those volumes are okay, and then move on from there. Okay, these toms are on the same stereo track. I actually don't mind that at all. I tend to treat my toms like that anyway. Let's just see how that blend works. Okay. 
Okay, a lot of the thickness is also coming from the overheads. So when you kind of file that away, keep that in mind for later. Okay, I feel pretty good about the drums. Um, they're solid, there's a pretty good balance there. I don't have a huge feel for the song yet, so let's just keep going. Let's expand out the bass and bring it in and see how it sounds. One thing I've noticed, I brought everything down six decibels and I brought most of that back up. So maybe I, I overcorrected by bringing it down six. That's totally fine, we can just bring those back up if we need to. It keeps us, I'd rather bring it down first so I don't have any surprises that blow my ears off uh, versus having it too loud and just freaking me out. So I can always bring this bass back up if I need to. Quick tip for setting level for the bass, try to make it roughly the same volume and same feel as the kick drum. Those are the two that are gonna go together. Uh, if they feel like they're one thing, that's a good thing in my opinion, leave it. Okay, that feels good, let's go on to, let's do the acoustics next. I think I remember from the song it had a fairly prominent acoustic sound. Okay, there's three acoustics. There's one that plays there and then two that play here. Let's pan those two left and right. At this point, I'm annoyed with the snare drum. My inclination is to go do some EQ and figure that out. That's not against the rules. We're gonna stick with our levels. I want the snare to be at the right volume right now. I can deal with the tone with an EQ later. I like these acoustics. Let's move on to the electrics and see what they're doing. Um, looks like we have one that comes in at the chorus, a lead part, and then a verses part. So let's figure out how those sound. Okay, we've got reach a point where we're trying to figure out some panning things. The acoustic, uh, the acoustic A and the guitar verses are playing almost the exact same time as the entire song, except for this last section here. So I vote we do some panning with those to make it interesting. Let's move the acoustic to the left and the electric verses to the right, and those two together should sound pretty cool. And then if, if it's just down to that one acoustic here at the end. So that section, I would be okay with bringing that acoustic back to the middle. So we're actually gonna do a panning automation move right here and bring that acoustic. So it's gonna stay on the left for the whole song except for that last section where we're gonna pan it to the middle. So it sounds like this but everywhere else it sounds like this. 
Okay. All right, cool. I feel good about that. Let's keep rolling. And again, this is just kind of gut stuff. I'm not overthinking it. I just threw, I realized that guitar is playing a similar thing to what the acoustic was playing. So let's make them opposite one another. So we don't have everything up the middle. All right, let's see what the keyboards are doing. There's only two. One plays, looks like during the choruses, actually just plays during this section, and then one at the outro. So we'll just get those levels real quick. It's pretty quiet. Adds a cool dynamic there. I think it plays here as well. Might be a little loud there, but I liked it earlier, so we'll deal with that later. Um, and let's see the keys outro. Make a, just a random decision and pan that off to the side. So here, it's playing along very similar to what the lead guitar is doing. Oh, I guess to the chorus guitar. But since they don't play together anywhere else in the song, I want the chorus guitar to stay up the middle. And I'm just gonna pan this one. I just feel like right feels right. So I'm gonna pan it off to the right. Um, so that it's not sitting right on top of that lead guitar. Yeah, that feels pretty good. All right, let's, uh, who we wanna mess with next? Let's get the, the background vocals. I like to save vocals to the end anyway. So let's see how our backgroundies are doing. Um, they're all but one singing here, so let's just start with this section. Okay, so some of these have been already kind of pre-mixed down. That's actually fine. Um, so you got these two here. Now everyone's looking for it. So pan those left and right and then have this stereo one just up the middle. Uh, and it sounds pretty good. Now everyone's looking for it. Everyone's praying that she's so Okay, and there's one more spot where another background vocal was singing here, background vocal D. Okay, well that one a little quiet. That sounds cool. Let's see what's happening with the lead vocal. Let's do the last chorus. Here's lead vocal. Now everyone's looking for real. Everyone's praying she's all right. Everyone's looking for real. Now everyone's looking for real. Everyone's praying she's all right. Everyone's looking for Okay, so that vocal is kind of muddy. We'll EQ it later. That vo that level feels okay. Then there's one other background or vocal here that I think is just a double. Years later. Okay. okay, I just noticed a mistake that I made uh, and just in time for the end of this video so you can ponder 
You just go sit and think about what I've done. Um, when I went through and turned everything down six decibels, turns out, if you look, you probably noticed at the beginning, every one of my buses is also turned down by six decibels. It must have selected all of them underneath. I thought I only had the audio track selected, but I also had my buses selected, which makes sense now why I turned all the, the drum tracks back up. Um, and I was always, I was thinking, well, why am I keep turning these back up? It's cause I'd already turned down the bus 6 dB and the tracks. Um, so I ended up getting everything back to kind of a same level. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to go try to fix it because mathematically I should go fix that. Cause I made a mistake. It's fine. Everything is well below clipping. There's no clip lights going off. Everything sounds good. Um, it just, that makes sense now. Earlier, I remember saying, man, I, I, I guess I just needed more volume on these drums. It's because I turned down the bus and the individual tracks. So something to keep in mind, it actually doesn't, doesn't matter at all um, because it got turned down either way. Um, so I'm not going to obsess about that and go turn down the individual buses now because it's feeling pretty good. We got a good static mix. <laughs> Couple of things. If your tracks don't sound pretty good when you play it like this with no plugins, then you need to work more on getting those tracks to sound good. These tracks sound great. Now there are things like the the snare drums a little too thick, the lead vocal needs to be dealt with, right? It sounds too muffled right now, and those are all things we can do uh, when we get to mix those. But generally speaking, the tones here are great and make for a very cool song. So we've only heard bits and parts of the song because we were just getting levels here, but I think we got everything that we wanted. Now we can start working on the song as a whole, working on the individual pieces, and moving forward. And that's what we're going to do in episode two. I'll see you then.